So question number five here says that a stone is dropped from a great height and it takes four seconds to reach the ground. From what height was the stone dropped? Ignore air resistance. So in this case, we're solving for a displacement. And in this case, first thing I'm gonna say is that gravity is acting on this stone the entire time as we've got a vertical displacement. And since we have an acceleration, this first equation will do us no good. Uh, and in this case, we're, again, we're looking for that displacement, which we have here, here, and here amongst our equations. Uh, and in this case, we know the initial velocity, but we don't know the final velocity. So that average velocity is not something we can use, and we'll move on to the next equation. This next equation, it's convenient that this thing is dropped from rest, so that that initial velocity being zero, that first term just actually drops out of the equation, it equals zero. And we're left with delta x equaling one half at squared. And as we know, both the acceleration due to gravity and the time is what's given, four seconds in this problem, we can use that to solve for that displacement. So in this case, I'll call it delta y instead of delta x, but this simplifies down to simply one half a t squared, and in this case, one half, and the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second per second, times t squared here, which is four seconds all squared. And if we do our math here, so four squared is 16 times 9.8, uh, or actually, let's just multiply by half, uh, which gets us 8 times 9.8, which gets us 78.4 meters. Cool, and there's your correct answer. Now, I said we couldn't use that first equation here, but the truth is we can really use this equation if we want to, and again, it's my favorite, so I like using it. So delta y equals v average t. So, and the key is we were given the initial velocity, just infer that it's zero being that the stone is dropped, but we weren't given the final velocity. But the truth is we could use this last equation, which again is just the definition of acceleration, which hopefully you kind of have an intuitive feel for. So to figure out that after four seconds, well, if the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second per second, uh, then after four seconds, we'd have a final velocity of 39.2 meters per second. And combining those, we'd figure out that the average velocity is 19.6 meters per second. And with an average velocity of 19.6 meters per second over the course of four seconds, if you multiply those out, you'd find out that our displacement, uh, we just verify that it was indeed 78.4 meters. Now on problem number six here, uh, we've got a stone being dropped from a height of 100 meters, and the question is how long, so we're solving for time, does it take for the stone to reach the ground, ignore air resistance? Uh, now, first thing that I have for ourselves is there an acceleration, yes or no? And with this being uh, vertical movement here, we do have acceleration due to gravity towards the center of the Earth, and so we're not using this equation right here. Now, of our equations dealing with uniform uh, acceleration, uh, we're not going to be using the first one. We know the initial velocity is zero. The stone's being dropped, so dropped from rest. Uh, but we don't know the final velocity, so getting an average velocity is going to prove problematic. So we're not going to use that one. Uh, the second equation here, we want to solve for time. And while time does show up in two places, what's convenient is with this initial velocity being zero, this whole term goes to zero and goes away. And that leaves us with an equation we can actually solve here. So delta x, I'll call it delta y since we've got a vertical displacement. And that equals 1 half at squared. And in this case, we know the displacement. We know the acceleration due to gravity. The only thing we don't know is time, and we can solve for it here. And if we rearrange this just a little bit, so t is going to equal 2 delta y over a, and we'll just take the square root. All right, in this case, one question we could ask ourselves here is uh, the acceleration to gravity. Is it 9.8 meters per second squared? Is it negative 9.8 meters per second squared? Does it matter? So, well, a couple things here. In, in our equation we've got left here, we've got to realize that our displacement is 100 meters downward, and our acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared downward. And since they both point downward, we can, we can make them both positive, we can make them both negative. It doesn't really matter. Now, properly, they're negative, but again, we would just cancel out the negative signs anyway. So I'm just going to plug them in as positive numbers here. So in this case, we'll get the square root of 2 times 100 meters all over 9.8 meters per second per second. So if we kind of approximate this in our head here, uh, 2 times 100 is 200, divided by 9.8, round that to 10. Uh, 200 divided by 10 would be 20, and the square root of 20 is going to be somewhere between 4 and 5. Well, if you actually work out the math here, this is going to come out to right around 4.5 seconds. There's your answer. All right, question number seven. A stone is dropped from a great height. Its final velocity just before it reaches the ground is 60 meters per second. From what height was the stone dropped? Ignore air resistance. 
Uh, in this case, with the stone having a vertical displacement downward here, but being vertical, gravity is going to be acting on it the entire time, so it will have an acceleration, and this equation won't do us any good. Now, between our four equations here, we want to know the height the stone was dropped for, and that's going to be equal to the absolute value of its vertical displacement. Uh, and we've got displacement here, here, and here. But the big thing is we don't know anything about the duration of this, the time. So that equation won't do us any good, and that equation with time won't do us any good. And we're going to get stuck using my least favorite equation. Now, the truth is we could probably get around this if we wanted to, uh, using this last equation to figure out the time and then going the other route and stuff. But uh, it's probably just faster to go this route. So in this case, we've got v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a and I'll call it delta y instead of delta x with it being a vertical displacement. Uh, in this case, our final velocity uh, is 60 meters per second. We should keep in mind that's a, a vertical uh, final velocity that is negative because uh, it's downhill. Uh, but the velocity the entire time is pointing down. The acceleration due to gravity points down. The displacement points down. With them all pointing down, I can make them all positive or all negative, and I'm just going to make them all positive. Uh, so this is going to be 60 meters per second, and we'll square that equals, and that's no initial velocity, drop from rest, and 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared times delta y. And if we rearrange and solve this for delta y, we're going to get 3600 meters squared per second squared, all over 2 times 9.8 is 19.6 meters per second squared, and that's going to come out to, you can round it up to 184 meters.